Good evening from Ghana, good afternoon from North America, and good morning from Asia. I once again come your way with Music Time with Varric. This episode will blow your mind. You're going to learn a lot. Please like, share, subscribe, be part of this. Don't go away. We'll come back with a discussion after this short break. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. I told you earlier on that today's discussion is going to be a mind-blowing one. Today, our topic is, can there be a song without a composer? Can there be a song without a composer? Interesting discussion. And uh, for my guest today, I have the honor to introduce to you Dr. Benjamin Amachi Boatin, Dr. Amachi Boatin is a known name, a known face for TV programs, and uh, he's a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana Music Department. He's a composer, he's a performer, and he's a critic, music critic, a very strong one. So I am happy to introduce to you Dr. Benjamin Amachi Boatin. Good evening, sir. Good evening, James. You are welcome to Music Time with Varek. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so this is a big man for him. <laughs> so our topic is, can there be a song without a composer? It's an interesting one. Doc, is that possible? Um, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to come on to Music Time with Varek. And I must say that this uh, topic you are bringing it's, it's an interesting one. To <laughs> Tujegu. <laughs> it's an interesting one. Uh, can there be any song that has no composer? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why you are asking this question, but on the, on, on, uh, I mean, what I can say briefly is that there can't be any song without a composer. The, every song that we have in this world came out of somebody. Could mm. be a group of people collaboration or something mm. but definitely there is a name behind every song that we, we we hear in this world including ghanian songs every ghanian song the fact that you don't know the composer doesn't mean somebody's name is not attached to it so it's possible even Obunman Kumo, Obunman Kumo was composed by someone yeah 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 you, especially you see when you come to these traditional songs for instance um some of them come out of um, what, what we call incidental music, recreational, recreational music. You know, they will be there uh, uh, in Ghana, for instance, um, in, in our villages. Sometimes when they go to the farms and then they come back after a hard day's work, they sit down and then drinking something. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, a song comes out. And definitely, the song comes out from an One individual. Person and maybe somebody will contribute some lyrics or something to it, and then it becomes a community-based right. song. So definitely, Obruman Kuma has a composer, but we may not know the composer, or it depends on how, when the song was composed. That's so right. those of us in the now may not know the name attached to this particular song, but definitely, there is a composer to this song. Wow. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Interested. Yeah. So what about the church music? For instance, um, uh, we have uh, this big hymn book, Presby Hymnal, Methodist Hymnal, um, Kali Hymnal, we have all of them. Yeah. Are they also composed by people? Oh yes, but when you look at the Methodist uh, hymn book, the, I mean all these hymn books you are talking about, if you critically study the music, they have composer's name attached to it. Sometimes you have music by so so and so, and then the lyrics by so so and so. And most of these hymns, I must say, came out during the Romantic period, where there was collaboration between uh, uh, poets and musicians. So somebody writes a poem, and then somebody sets it to music. So most of these uh, hymns that we have in our churches, Pentecost, uh, no, not Pentecost, I'm talking about Presby, Methodist, Anglican, and all these uh, other um, mainline churches, 
the, it is stated in their hymn book, the song, who composed it or who contributed lyrics to it. So those ones, there's no doubt about it. They so they are collection. They are collection. Collection of different hymns put together. Put together, it's, yes. It's not really a, a songs belonging to that particular church. No, 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 no. no. Because normally we hear, these are... No, no, no. no. The, the fact that they, they put it together doesn't mean that it belongs uh, to them. Those who, who put the songs together may be people who believed in the Methodist faith, for instance, or the Pent uh, Presbyterian faith or so. But, um, I mean, when the song comes out, it's, it's for everybody. So, uh, uh, and maybe the, the, the content of the song may, um, may, be, may align to the faith, the belief of a particular church. So they can also add it to okay. their collection, to, just to help in the faith. Uh, uh, growing of faith of the members of the church. Okay. So, yeah. the, but there can be um, a situation where a church or um, an organization um, commissions someone to also write yes. uh, based on the, its faith. Yes, yes. Um, so that they can include in the in their inbox. Yeah, yeah. So, for instance, the letter they sent him now, mm -hmm. you have a lot of modern compositions okay. to say that are okay, composed by members or musicians of the church. church. Yes. Yes, and this this uh, um, this kind of uh, composition started way back when uh, people like J.S. Bach, Handel, and the rest they belonged to particular um, um, courthouses or maybe churches or so. So, like with Handel, for instance, you know the coronation anthems, commissioned to do that, and so commissioning people to to come up with. Uh, songs that speak to, about the faith of a particular denomination is, is not something that is new. It has started a long time and we still have them now. Thank you, Doc. I have to pause a little. Let's go ahead and take some music and come back. And uh, it's, it's getting interesting. It will get more interesting and uh, very hot. Uh, very interesting discussion. Uh, can there be a song without a composer? We will be right back. Ni peyi na re shi shi wo aje kwa Yesu aje borye fure chen wo aye re fure fre wo we a si ya wo kwa ye ni peyi na re vi vi.
to give a little education to the public and uh, whoever is following, uh, we want to throw a little light. Doc, what is a composition and who is a composer? Interesting question. Mm. Um, a composition in, in music, you know, a composition can be in other um, subjects, but for the sake of what we are doing, we are talking about musical mm -hmm. composition. Yeah. So, it's anything uh, put together. Um, if you put melody, rhythm, I mean, all these elements of music, if you are able to put all together so that it can be performed by either an orchestra or a choir or a, a, an individual singer, then we call it music composition. Okay. And the composer is the one who puts all these things together to come up. So a melody, melody, harmony, harmony rhythm, rhythm, and form. Form, texture, I mean, all, all, all these uh, elements that make up. But the basic ones are what you have uh, mentioned. Melody, harmony, uh, form, and rhythm. Mm -hmm. This is These are basic, and they should be found in every composition. Okay. And so, um, like I said, there are other people who compose, like literature, for instance. You can compose the text okay. of something. But that doesn't make it musical Music. until you put melody in or until you have some, some rhythm going with it, some harmony. No, the basic about it is that until it has some melody that goes up and down, then you have just composed some text, mm -hmm. but not a musical composition. Mm -hmm. Now, people who call you um, and send you, let's say, two pages of words. Yes. God is this, uh, and he, said, he says he's a composer. No, so no, 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 no. I don't, I don't call them composers. I don't call them music composers. They could be other forms of comp composers, but not for music. Once he has not put in any melody or uh, any, any of these musical elements, any elements of composition, I don't call him a, a, music, a music composer. Compo but he could be a, a, a poet, a poem composer or something else, but not a music composer. So when you put your words together and you need someone to put music on it, please don't take the full credit that you are a composer, a music composer. You are trying to be a composer. You're a literature or uh -huh, a yeah. poet. poet or something. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, Doc, do we have composers in Ghana? Yes, there are several of them, several of them. Even as we said at the beginning, some may be unknown, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean they don't exist. That's right. There are there are several songs we have been singing that we we never know the composers, but we sing them. But like we said, no song can come out without somebody preparing it or, or uh, cooking or composing it. So for Ghana, we have several composers, ranging from art musicians, mm -hmm. popular musicians, traditional music, all kinds of music. We have people who compose them. Once there's a tune to yes. it, it's someone who somebody, created it. Somebody created it. <laughs> yeah. But when I was very little, um, yeah. I was a small boy, I didn't know much about this. Mm -hmm. And I thought that compositions or music were put together by God, like in a very big book, yeah. <laughs> given from <laughs> the beginning of the world. Okay. So you, you check into it, maybe page 2005 and you'll find the composition you like I never knew that I was little I didn't know that people were composing mm -hmm. I didn't know this and so here in Ghana for instance let me use a Ghanaian example I know people are watching from all over the world yeah. but I can speak better of a Ghanaian yes. experience than other places here we are in Ghana a few weeks or a few months ago we realized that a lot of songs were composed by um, one old elder of the Apostolic Church, Elder Ampio, I think he, we lost him yeah. just about a week ago. Mm -hmm. These are songs that we all used to sing, play along, yeah. recordings, and, but we didn't know his work. Mm -hmm. I can also give you a classical example of um, Oseb Watin, for instance. Yeah. You'll be there, you, people who came to know Oseb Watin later on didn't even know that he composed a song like Yesu Kao. Mm -hmm. Because a gospel artist had recorded it. No credits. Everybody thought that, oh, eh, so we sing it. Not crediting the composer. composer. And even sometimes fighting when the composer comes out that this is this my is song. My, yeah. This is my song. 
And uh, people fight that, oh, uh, nyame nyame, is it not God who has given you and why are you saying you are the composer? Is it not God who gives you? But it is someone's creativity. Doc, what is the problem? What causes this problem? Um, like you rightly said, it is right. Uh, um, the man you just mentioned, um, uh, Elder Ampia, mm. may his soul uh, rest, rest rest in peace. Amen. I sang a lot of his songs without even knowing that it was. You know, he belonged to the I think it's the Pentecost Apostolic, Apostolic Church. The Apostolic Church is blessed with Elder uh, 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 Ampia and the Apostle Anderson and all those uh, uh, people. But you know, most of those songs that El Dampia wrote were, con were recorded by Other some artists. young, uh, young artists, young, relatively younger than mm -hmm. uh, uh, El Dampia. Mm -hmm. And so we will always credit those people that they composed the song until mm -hmm. El Dampia himself came out, even in his old mm -hmm. age, to say that this song I composed, that one I composed. And, and we were all, I mean, mm -hmm. in awe, we said, wow, this man has done a lot for, for for gospel music, especially those in the Pentecostal churches. His songs were sung everywhere and, and I mean, they blessed a lot of hearts. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yes, I think that the, the, the problem with especially Christians is that the thing that freely you receive, freely you give. And so once it is God that, that has given you, the, God gives the ability to, to, to compose. God will not drop the thing in you like that. I mean, when he when he he gives it, he drops it in somebody. It is he has an it, now. Who do we say is the mother of uh, Jesus Christ? It's it's Mary, mm -hmm. because he she availed herself at a particular point in time. And any time we are calling for uh, the mother of Jesus Christ, we don't mention any any other person's name, but we mention Mary's name because. She was the link. The she was the vessel, and so every song that we have has a vessel. Whether uh, it, it came from God or not, there is a vessel, and that vessel becomes the composer. Mm. You were the one who put everything together mm. and and brought it out. So we don't have to just say that this song is is, is by God. So then we should all go and claim. But this is a very <laughs> profound statement, yes. especially with Jesus Christ. Yes, He being. Um, um, an incarnate of the Virgin, mm -hmm. or it's, he's, he's a special being. Yes. He's our light. Is everyone the person we follow? Yes. The whole world. I mean, no one could have laid claim that uh, he's my son. Uh -huh. But we we still don't play with Mary or yes. Joseph. But mm -hmm. Joseph was his father, yes. and that's it. That's it. I mean, Jesus should belong to, or uh, even I mean, he's he's bigger than Joseph himself. Mm -hmm. So Joseph should even. Mm -hmm feel so shy to claim that Jesus is my son. But we, we don't discredit Joseph or Mary. Exactly. So why, it's, so the, the, the channel through which the product comes must not be taken lightly. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. No, but in, in Ghana, we, I mean, if it's from people who don't know, mm -hmm. we'll say that they don't know. Yeah. But let's work on it. But sometimes, there are people who claim to be in music. Mm -hmm. For instance, as an artist, how could you just take a song that you know exists and not do any research about it and think that I can just go and sing it? Yeah, you see, people think the old order continues. But now, with the advent of technology, even, there is, you don't have any excuse. There is no excuse for you not researching into a particular music that you have. You have heard before especially and this comes as a result of people who especially do arrangements but but the, the the tricky thing is that some don't even arrange the song they just pick the song just as it is and put their names on it like that and it, it, and the real owners of the or the real composers are missing mm. just because somebody else has has made it popular or yeah. something like that so um you have no excuse not to research whether you 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 can read or or you cannot read you have no excuse not to find out find time to find out about a certain song that you have heard or, mm. or uh, and and you will be informed mm. definitely when you seek for knowledge you will find it anywhere and maybe to 
uh, people seek for the knowledge at wrong places. Because I know some, some places you go, they will tell you that, oh, this song, um, they, there's no composer. It's not, being young. it's not every for anybody. Just sing it. And especially if you go to Holy Ghost field, I mean, I mean, I'm using this word advisedly. People will judge just people. They will tell you that no, this song is from God, so everybody can. No, can I use remember it one and, time and uh, yeah. someone someone was commenting on um, one of my compositions. Yes. Specifically, uh, then I mean, for now you uh, say, someone said, "Oh, God bless you, Mr. Ma." And someone said, "Hey, this song has been in existence." this song was there how can you say someone wrote it what is the problem the person cannot hear music and know that someone must definitely compose something or just because the test is biblical and has heard the test before or when music uh, when the music stays around for some time we tend to think that it existed or something well i mean this particular song we are talking about um then I mean, find that I was teaching it in my church. My I I go to a charismatic church, and I was trying to teach the way I knew it on the spot. <laughs> and they would told me that no, this is not how we also heard it. I said, hey. So especially with some of the read Wonia, Wonia, we all know which one is is now the correct one. And the Sichibedu too has a certain song. But they are saying Wadum Tina or something like that. And so those of us who know the original song as it was, when we are singing it elsewhere, then now we are all in trouble. We don't know which one is correct or not. And such and a so song, no, people think that oh, was not composed. Yes, uh, it's, it's, it's in a public, public domain. domain. You and doc, maybe no, we have no. to talk about that. We'll, we'll come back to the public domain thing. Yes. But even that, is it an issue of um, us thinking that when we talk too much about the composers, because some of our people are thinking so spiritual and so um, that kind of thinking that they think that if we give so much attention to the musicians or the composers, they are taking the place of God or the gift of God. Is that, does it also play a yeah, part it, of... it could play a part because it is in the Bible, it says, not unto us, O Lord, but unto you alone be the glory. You see, so people may think that once I'm the channel, the thing is not me, it's, it's still uh, God. But the same Bible says that the, uh, it, it gives us gifts to open doors for us, gives us ways. So if you have been given a gift of composition, or you have been, you, you've gone to school, you know now know how to compose and everything, and we don't recognize you as the channel. But Mary was always recognized as a channel mm -hmm. through which uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus Christ came. came. So I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, a channel being acknowledged that this is the channel through which. But of course, we hear songs, we, we, we hear the song and we say that no, this song is really from God because of the way the melody is going, the lyrics mm -hmm. and everything. But we still acknowledge that this is coming from, uh, this, this channel was able to birth this song. And so there is nothing wrong with we knowing who a composer is or who a channel through which music has come. There's, there's nothing wrong with giving that credit to whoever is due. And I'm sure that when we do that, it will even please God that mm -hmm. we are doing mm -hmm. we are doing something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think things are, are getting better, especially in the choral um, kind of music. Uh, there used to be times that your choir master just comes to church, and maybe he would have a score, teach a song. He just start begin begins to teach. I said, Daniela, you write your notes in your singing notebook or a uh, yeah, paper or something. You don't know the composer. You, you just write your words and sing. But these days, because of the scores that people, choristers see it, and also social media and other things, I think it's getting better. Yeah. But we, we still have a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have a long way to go. Yeah. Like, re when people want to use a song, or once you touch any music, you must find or research to know who is behind it. That is very, very important. That credit should not be taken for granted the composer of the song should. And, and you see some, some songs, sometimes even those who transcribe the songs mm -hmm. forget even to put 
the names of the company, but they are, they've always remembered to put their name transcribed by <laughs> so so and so there. But the most important thing, the composer, if if the, there's a musical, com the one who okay. composed the music should be there, the lyrics should be there. Mm -hmm. And then maybe under it, you can put your name as the transcriber or somebody. But I think that it is very, very important that we even as choir directors, any song that we, we pick to, to teach, we need to just give a certain etymology if we know the, how did the song come about, the, the history of the song, who composed it, in what circumstances. If we can add all these things, it even adds meaning to the choir, uh, for the choirs when they are singing. They understand that mm, mm -hmm. this song was birthed out of a certain situation right. and they are able to sing it well. But maybe even the, some of the choir masters or music directors, we don't even know some of these things. They, 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 they don't know anything about the composers, hmm. but they just hear certain melodies. They say, oh, this song is nice, and then that's all. But, but the, if the, even the, those who compile the Bible, they give us a part. Yeah. If, for instance, I say, the Lord is my shepherd, and I say that it's Luke, mm -hmm. <laughs> who wrote this one, everybody say, hey, wow. Yeah. Because boldly written, Psalm. Some psalms, yeah. And once we know a psalm, we are talking about someone. Mm -hmm. When we go to Luke, we know what Luke said. Yeah. John, we cannot credit someone's work with the other. Yeah. So the Bible that we follow has a pattern. Yes. That we, we don't take um, giving credits lightly. Yeah. Yeah. I think we musicians or the, the general, I mean, Americans, for instance, mm -hmm. They, they, they call a song by their, their, their composers. composers. I've been in a rehearsal when the conductor is working. He would just say, let's do the handle. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go over the Mozart. Mm -hmm. But here in Ghana, I'll say, oh, let's do the that with upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. Instead of pushing it into the people, yeah. knowing that, oh, there's someone behind it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all have a duty. We all owe ourselves a duty to make things better. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the the um, calling songs by the composers, I mean, is very, very Im important. And like I say, it it all comes back to the music directors who need to educate their their uh, singers, and then educating their singers. The singers can also take it outside um, of of the church premises or wherever they they are to give you credits to whoever the credit is, mm -hmm. is is due so that i mean we can still we can still be saying let's let's do new lavanans um, did that with upon the lord especially with with the advent of um, uh, would I, what, for lack of a better word copying of music mm -hmm. there's did that with upon the lord by several composers mm -hmm. another title my help comes from the lord several composers so which one are we doing it? So when you mention yes, when you mention the composer's name attached to the song, I mean it give, goes a long way to give due credit to whoever has has uh, bent the midnight candle to compose something for for the benefit of everybody. Doc, we live in a country where true and poor is very very massive in our studies and uh, everything. Yeah, we chew so. We tend to forget a lot of things that we learn after some time. Mm -hmm. It's just natural within us, or uh, within Africa. Yeah. Now, once we pass the exam, we are done with yeah. it. So even music students mm -hmm. who learn much about music history and uh, about composers, after about a year of taking the examination, might forget the questions you asked them. Yeah. Who composed this song? They don't know. They don't know. In this case, is it part of the problem where we forget even our composers when they are alive? Mm -hmm. Before we go to the public domain thing, the people are alive, mm -hmm. they are not dead. It took someone to make me aware that some songs were composed by one um, musician called Samuel Ousu. I didn't know the name. I knew uh, Felix Ousu. Okay. Felix Ousu is the Okwen Tune, the Okwen Tune Mobro. Someone said, oh, this song you are playing is by uh, Samuel Ousu. I didn't know Samuel Ousu. Who is this Samuel Ousu? And I went back to learn about Samuel Ousu. And I realized that he had recorded a lot 
a lot, a lot. Yeah. Well, a car wouldn't you know, they be yeah, many out. hit songs, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so it prompted me that mm, there are so many things that we are not doing right. The man is alive, but we've forgotten about his yeah. yeah. And uh, is it part of the problem why our musicians don't get their due in their lifetime mm-hmm. to even talk about <laughs> life beyond their, <laughs> their death? Yeah, what you are saying is very true. Most, uh, for instance, just recently also we lost uh, uh, Osei Boatin. Mm-hmm. And it is now that some of his songs that we didn't even know have started coming up. The only ones we knew were the few ones, Yesu Kaohu and Jatabruwa and a whole lot. But I even didn't know he had a, a, a YouTube channel until I was just chancing on my computer and I saw, and he had recorded a whole lot of songs. And I said, ah, why should we wait till the person is dead before we start even making this research about the person and all those things? So like you're saying, once the person is alive, we need to be able to get information. Because even when we when we visit the person while he's alive, he can tell us a lot more about, about his processes and, and all these things but we tend to ignore them um, mm. I just excuse my word mm. if Samuel Uso should go right now you will see how popular he will become and 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 I don't know whether it's human nature to celebrate the dead rather than the living you see so it's it's good but with your probing mind you are able to get information that no these songs there's another composer called Samuel Uso but how many uh, probing minds do we have now people don't really care about it. once the thing is is there they don't care where it's coming from and and all those things they will just use it to satisfy themselves without knowing the source and all those things but it's, we need to go beyond and and find out some of these things when you're able to find the like um, uh, uh, Bob Mali said if you know the history then you know where you are coming from That's right. and and we will be able to project into the future once we know the sources of some of these songs that we sing, and then we can also inform ourselves as to how to even develop it from from those uh, uh, from where they left off and, and the rest. That's a problem. So, uh, you know, Africans, I think we have an issue with even healing our own people. Yeah. You know, I remember I was in New York one time, just walking in front of a shop, and I saw a huge crowd, a lot of people. What are they doing? And I asked, he said, Justin Bieber just entered the shop. Oh. His management just put something there. They are taking money. People want to go and take food. <laughs> but here in Africa, we meet our stars and sometimes we even pretend that yeah, we've not seen them. We've not seen them. I, I, I've, I've had occasions yeah. where someone sees you and so one, a friend will say, Ah, are you in the economy? So, you in you winning. <laughs> you any, you any, um, you any. And then when the person passes, you can stand at the back and watch the person. Oh no, he's the one. He's the one. Yeah. But they think that if they make you feel that they are big. Yeah. Yeah. And so we don't celebrate our people. Yeah. We let them die. Doc, I, we will take a very short break and uh, come for the final round okay. before we conclude. Can there be a song without a composer? Stay right here. Yeah. 
Welcome back from the break. This is music time with Varik to go into a final discussion. Please like, follow, share. And also, if you want to advertise on this program, kindly look out for the number on your screen. Contact that number. And uh, we'll, we'll do wonderful work together. If you also want to sponsor this show, you know, it takes quite a lot to get things together. If you want to support, sponsor, please reach out through the number on your screen and then we'll do a good business. So the final part of our discussion, can there be a song without a composer? Doug, so do we have songs that are for the public free, that anybody can use it? Or um, when the music is written, five years, 10 years, um, it doesn't belong to the composer again, or lifetime, can, we, can you throw a little light on the, the, public, the, the domain. public domain thing? Yeah, um, <clears throat> once the composer is alive, all credit goes to the composer. And when he or she passes on, at 50 years after the death, between 50 to 70 years after the death of the composer, the song now becomes public domain song. And anybody can use it uh, with, with permission even from the copyright mm. uh, um, uh, association. You okay. need to seek permission. The fact that it's in the public domain does not mean that you can just take it and then use because definitely you have to uh, seek permission from the public uh, uh, copyright office. Okay. But this happens 50 years to 70 years after the death of the, of the composer. Now, so if I get you right, even after the death of the composer, the yeah. song still belongs to the composer. Yes. Or lifetime, the song belongs to the composer. Exactly. Even after 70 years, yes. depending on the jurisdiction, yes. 50, 70 years, mm -hmm. it's, the so credit must still be given the composer. To the composer, yes. Only that you can use it mm -hmm. for anything you want to yes. do, with or without permission, depending yeah. on... You can use it, but still, you need to credit where the music is, is coming from. So, so that you, you don't just still, uh, I mean, pick somebody's songs and then claim ownership because the person is no more after 50 years. No, still there is a, 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 a composer, a composer's name to the song. You can use the song for as many times as you want, but still you have to credit uh, the composer with, with, with his, his composition. Although the person has passed on, you still need to recognize that he is the one who composed the song. So what about our African situation, I mean Ghanaian situation? The person is alive yes. and still credit is not given. Copyright, they are not getting anything from it. Is it the cost of most of our, of our musicians, not just music, I think it happens in even movies and other yeah. things. They die purpose or they will be sick and we will be calling out uh, for some help. Mm -hmm. Because I remember Michael Jackson was alive for more than 10 years with no concert. Yeah. But he still survived. He was still rich, he was getting yes. richer. What is the secret? I think we take things for granted here in our, our where we are. We, we don't really get to learn the ethics of the business, the business side of music. Like we established at the beginning, we think that it's God who gives. So, I mean, you don't, you, 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 God can use it anyhow. But we need to understand the ethics of the game. And when we do that, you know that you need a manager. If you yourself want to manage yourself, fine. But you need somebody to manage your your works for you. If you, uh, in those days, we had record labels that you you need to belong to a record label, so that even after some time, the record label can manage can manage to get you some um, uh, some royalties and all the all the all those things. But we are taking things for granted. Once I have some talent that I can compose one or two songs. I don't care where it's going to, then I, I will release the, the song without any protection on the song, and then it, somebody takes it and then does his own. There are lots of songs that are not even registered with copyright. Mm. If, you, if you go out to check, and as I'm, I am sure that choral musicians no, no, are no. even <laughs> are, are guilty of these things. But if you put a four bar music or something, you need to register it with copyright. 
so that they will in turn do some monetization, monitoring of whatever you you, you are you are putting. But do th those laws do they work here? Um, they, <laughs> it's a big question you are you are asking. They're supposed to work, but I mean if if people don't police them, we don't we don't we don't demand accountability from them. A lot of things will, will go um, will go wrong. I know over you you can. For some, for a whole, for a long period, royalties that can come to you is nothing to write home about as compared to elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, Michael Jackson for ten years didn't have any concerts, but still he was living, he was even getting richer than having concerts. But here, for ten years, fifteen years, the royalties that come to you, you 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 can't do anything with with it. And so our laws should should be strengthened. I don't know how, how, but those in charge of copyright laws and copyright issues, uh, Musica and the rest, they should be strengthened enough so that musicians can have some courage. That when I've, I've composed a song, let me take it to Musica, let me go and register it with them, so that anything that comes out of it, the musicians will be given their fair due. And I'm sure that when the musicians have courage in, in the powers that be, they will send their works and all those things. Uh, to, to them so that um, some of these issues can be kept. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Appropriate agencies, please, we are appealing to you. Mm -hmm. You also need to sit, sit up. I was going to say sit down. Mm -hmm. yeah, because most of you don't sit in the office. <laughs> so sit in the office, let people come and register their music and make sure the laws work yeah. to protect mm -hmm. artists. Uh, uh, the way things are going at uh, Enyefe and uh, artists die as puppets, even in their lifetime, they don't live well. And uh, what about their families? Because they, their work should feed themselves and their families yeah. before it gets to the pu pu yeah. public domain. Yeah. But in their lives, they are poor. How would even we talk about life after their death? Yeah, yeah. Ah. It's sad. It, it, it's, it's sad that most or some of our artists, not even in music alone, I mean, you mentioned um, uh, filmmakers, filmmakers yeah. and uh, theater practitioners, they serve they serve a lot. They look at uh, this television series that came, also Fudazi and uh, TV theater, the theater. All those actors, where are they now? Some of them are just living anyhow. Some of them virtually have to beg to eat, which I don't think, if they had um, they they had copyrighted their products mm -hmm. well. They wouldn't be, be be in the streets begging for for medical uh, to 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 pay for medical bills and all those things. It's sad. So please, powers that be, you have to sit up. Even as we musicians also sit up to be able to uh, make sure that our works are sent to you for copyright. Uh, you have to make sure also that what is due us comes to us, so that in our old age. We will not come back to you begging for for bread. It's very very important. Doc, this has been a very educative session, and um, I think uh, we would have to go further into other things. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for availing yourself for this wonderful interview. Doc, so the way forward, the final word about this whole copyright um, composer thing. What is the way forward? I think musicians should should understand the game so i belong to one uh, 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 is it a whatsapp group or telegram group of musicians and the way we treat our composers even there i mean sometimes i sit and i wonder uh, whether we have any ethics at all the composer will be on the page and somebody <laughs> puts a request on the page that i'm looking for this song instead of going directly to the composer and say that please can you give me this particular song so that if you pay something small it will support go a long way to support the composer but we just throw the songs anyhow and people take advantage and i i think that composers should try to protect their works try to register their songs so that there will be copyright on them once they get this copyright everything uh, and everything now songs will be credited to them and like we said 
music directors who teach songs should try and project the works of their, the, 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 the composers of the works that they are teaching. So for instance, you are teaching Day That Wait Upon The Law. Who is the composer? He said, New Love Anna. Who is New Love Anna? He is so, so, and so, and so. So you give a little education about him and any other songs that you are, you are learning. So the choristers are aware that this is what is happening. There are artists also who pick people's songs and go and sing them without um, uh, acknowledging the fact that this song was picked from this. And so the, the listeners now start fighting among themselves that, oh, this song is by this person. This, uh, this song is by this person. And sometimes even the, the original composer now cannot sing his own song because he is singing with the original lyrics. Somebody has tempered with the lyrics and now they think that the new lyrics is the, is the, is the one to go. It becomes an issue for, for all of us. So uh, my advice is that everybody should sit up. Musicians should sit up, performers should sit up, the copyright office and everybody should sit up so that in the old age of musicians or when musicians can no longer put pen on paper to compose or to come up with something, what they have done over the years can support them, can even support their families and even after they are gone, the family can also benefit from all that they have done. And when we are able to do that, I'm sure that Ghana and in fact musicians will benefit and will not struggle in their old age. Thank you so much for having me here. God bless you. Um, I believe you have been educated. You've had a wonderful time on Music Time with Farik. In the coming weeks, we'll bring you very interesting programs. But um, two important programs I want to share with you. It's on the 27th of April, hallelujah. It's my 40th birthday, hallelujah. Uh, just yesterday, I, I was just 18 years, and now I'm 40 years. So, um, in thanking God, together with my brothers, my April 84 brothers, myself, Anselm Yohansa, and Reverend Ebu Edumazi Kwenu, we are having hymns and prayer session at the Bethany Methodist Church Hall at the Joe. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. is the time. Come and sing hymns with us. Let's pray together. This program is a, a, a partnership between Varic Production and uh, Olive Organs, proudly Ghanaian. Come and uh, be a part of this wonderful program on the day, 27th of April. And uh, the big bash shh, will be on the 28th. It's the Full Power 6th edition, the Varic Experience, 28th April, 5 p.m. at the Accra International Conference Centre. Please get your ticket. You will find details of tickets on, on the screen, um, on the poster, um, short code, or you can reach out to any member of the Harmonious Choral um, for a ticket. 100 cities regular, 200 cities for VIP with a lot of treat for you. Don't forget these two programs, 27 and 28. More exciting news to come. This is how we draw the curtain on Music Time with Vary. See you on the next episode. I am out of here.